I, what I talk about is a joint good. With uh, Nicola uh, Nicola comes so to Nicola and Chipping uh, Sunday. So they are going fast. And so the problem I've discussed is a problem I'm thinking about since maybe 20 years. But we really tried to work seriously on this problem in 2020. <laughs> I remember this was the COVID time. And I had a walk in the forest uh, close to Orsay with Nicola Burk. Yes. We were all nice, so we don't remember, we were outside, the kind of thing. And so uh, he was asking me what you're working on. And I told him, ah, together with Sun, who was my postdoc at the time with Sergi, we are working on uh, improving our results on the sphere since uh, many years with Patrick Gerard. And he said, ah, yes, I'm working on the same thing, <laughs> but with my PhD student, Thomas. And I said, okay, so COVID inspired us. Also. <laughs> and then, okay, of course, we are normal people, but we decided to collaborate and to find each other. <laughs> and that's why, actually, this year, we are a collaboration from two sides of power. We get some experience, we join them, and at the end, we get some results. And then, hopefully, soon they will finish the poll. I will explain what is the poll. So the, job, the, the general setting is to take mj to be a Riemannian manifold of dimension two, so the surface. And we will suppose that the boundary is empty. So no boundary to make them like difficult as in the code. But of course, the uh, boundary is an interesting problem too. Then, uh, once I have a Riemannian manifold, I can uh, define the Laplace of the materials, which is defined uh, uh, in terms of the metric <laughs> as a second of the elliptic operator. And so the, the, the PD I will study is the nominal Schrodinger equation on post of this manifold. Which is this one, two dimensions. And so here you in the known function, which goes from R plus R is a complex space. This means that this guy is in fact something like U, U bar, Q. So this is the equation we will study. And uh, it turns out that this problem is interesting in the sense that. The theory of the resolution of this equation really depends on the geometry of the manifold, which is somehow more or less exceptional <laughs> because there are many situations where, where we have the result of the Euclidean space or and then the, the transition to a manifold is just a kind of technicality. Of course, interesting technicality, but at the end of the day, the result is somehow the same. <laughs> so here, we, the local work was the theory of this equation really depends on the nature of the manifold, which is somehow rare. And, uh, and the, one of the explanations is that uh, because of the even propagation speed uh, of, the, of the waves for the short equation, which makes that uh, it really depends on the background. There is no final propagation speed. For instance, similar questions for the wave equations are much more boring because uh, essentially each time you do something for R and it really manifold. And also for the heat equation, something similar is true. So somehow the Schroeder equation has this good property. And why actually it's really something I started to be interested in my PhD. <laughs> and the reason was that I was studying at that time the papers by Borgen on the Taurus, my name is the Taurus. And very naively as of some PhD student, I was thinking, okay, it's a huge mess of uh, Fourier series, but actually the, the world, everything is one dimensional. The main thing is going on the time variable. And then, of course, the Fourier series are important, but the big part of the theory is really true in any geometric setting. And that's why I very naively asked myself whether what's going to be replaced with another setting. I didn't, of course, it was a big luck that it's a really interesting problem and the independence of the geometry. But that's the way we entered in this problem. And then, uh, so an important, uh, important <laughs> thing is that there is a conservation. Problem. 
which is as follows. So I will write it in a way it's uh, convenient for my talk. So one may check that if you take the H1 norm square plus one half integral of U to the bar four. So this is a uh, constant quantity. Uh, so it is the integration on U with respect to the measure which comes from uh, from the metric, and here, here is the H1 norm. What is the H1 norm? In fact, I will immediately tell you what is the HS norm, where the HS norm of some function is simply, so we take one minus this Laplace to the power S over Q, U, and you take the L2 norm. So in the particular case, when S is equal to one. So this is something like, uh, uh, okay, I will write it, but I will raise it here. It's something like one minus the plus on U, U bar integrated. So if you make integration, from this one, you will recover the to norm, and from this one, you will recover gradient of your square. So I really want to put also the L2 norm here to be important for my uh, initial data. So if this is, uh, the sovereign space. So this is a norm in sovereign space, and then we just get many ways to define. Uh, we don't get the difficulty of the auto, a complex picture, but the same infinity function with this norm, but that space. And so let me start with the actually we can solve this problem thanks to the work by Brazis so, and Galois. And so it makes me think that two years ago or two two or three days ago, Brazis actually died. Uh, and so it's a big loss for mathematics, of course. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, they actually put uh, in uh, Galway. So what they proved is that this problem is uh, globally well posed. I would say what does it mean? In uh, HS, S bar S is bigger or equal than one. So this is the work by Brazil's government. And actually, in order to prove this kind of result, they say, yeah. well, for one, uh, you should look a little bit more, but it's true. You can prove units of uh, weak solution. Oh. So yeah, also one you can include by the way. But there is some uh, some subtlety in this, but I think it's fair to agree. Even they didn't hide it like this. Uh, well, I think somebody else bloody me or I don't know the researcher wrote it to respond. But you do in order of this thing. You do this. You need this by you. Yeah, yeah. So uh, actually, this Galway is body man for sure. Anyway, everything here has some other looks on the oil equations. Uh, actually, this is a good point. This result doesn't use the dispersion, but still it gives unique global solution for this equation as far as the initial data between the sovereign space HS and VL1, which means that the solution is unique, it preserves the regularity of the data, it's unique in a super very nice class, it continues with various images. What else? Uh, yeah, it preserves the regularity, continuous dependence. So we can solve the equation. And so the, the question I will ask today is. Uh, um what what about well also this I want to take this way of also this in HS for a small than one. Of course, one may ask this question is artificial, and I will try to motivate you that there is a reason to care about this question, which is the so-called Gibbs measure problem. So the Gibbs measure problem is typically a problem. Where one needs to have a local well positive, even local. What about local well positive in local or regular spaces? Because this is typically the problems which appear in this measure problem. So I will spend now a considerable amount of time to introduce this motivation because I'm, I think many of you are not familiar with this, or I think a big part of my talk. We will introduce the mix measure on any thought, and so how exactly it comes. But uh, I don't think this so. Many people know. I was surprised that even you think. 
uh, right. So uh, let us. So motivation of this question. Motivation. For well, this question. For well, the question. This question. Well, the motivation comes from this formal object. So I will note by star something normal, which is z minus one, the exponential minus the yeah. well, So uh, this object is formally the Higgs measure. Higgs measure associated with my problem in it. So I think for the moment this object is completely formal because it's not clear what means the U in the back measure. So here one may one may define this function now. And so this everything is in this constant that uh, how we renormalizing it. And of course it's a whole story how we define it, but I will uh, just uh, make the looks very short and I say after some standard computations, what may be fine One may be fine. So maybe I did some things. I don't want to erase it. Oh, okay, so one may define this measure star uh, as a measure and now I use many abbreviation absolutely continuous with respect to uh, with respect to with respect to the measure image measure to the measure defined by. So I define your measure. Maybe you don't see yet why this is a measure, but I will explain later. C omega x. <clears throat> Where this psi omega x is defined as a random set. So omega is a random parameter x is the variable on the sphere. So how it is defined? It's a sum of uh, gn omega, one plus lambda square, one half, phi and x. There's just many objects appeared. Now I will try to define all of them. Great. So the first object are phi n. So phi n are the Laplace and Hamming-Egan functions. So these are functions which satisfy such an equality, uh, such equality, such that phi n form a uh, orthonormal basis of L two on the so it's really for any minute. So each time you take uh, Laplace on the on a compact manifold, uh, as you know, mm -hmm. this audience, I don't need to explain the the, the, the spectrum is uh, is uh, discrete, and so there is a sequence of eigen values, and so this uh, we, we know that one lambda zero is zero. And the corresponding eigenfunction is a constant. So this simply means that if uh, I put a constant <laughs> a function and it's zero, and it's simple, and this here the fact that we don't get boundary in size, if we get a boundary, this is not good. Uh, the constant should be zero. And then, okay, there are many others. If they increase, they are positive, uh, and there are many good pieces. For instance, in the sphere, there are functions as we discussed, it's also exceptional. And uh, so, this is the first object in this side. So, I, I promise you that this map defines a measure. For the moment, it's just a map which to omega gives side omega x. So, there is phi n, which is the eigen function. So, two things appear so the eigen values and the eigen function. 
And now the other interesting thing here, what are these GN? So GN omega. So this is a sequence of what? This is a, these are independent. Independent standard. Well, standard for maybe some people, maybe not the full standard for you. That's why I will explain complex. So in this world, I said many things. So the fact that they are independent is extremely strong assumption. <laughs> and the fact that they are standard complex Gaussians, I will explain what does it mean. So, uh, so independent random variables means that if you take the joint distribution, it's simply the product of the each distribution. Uh, and then, uh, uh, which is very exceptional, uh, a very exceptional coupling of the two laws. Couple, you take two measures, there are many couplings giving the two measures as much. You know? mm. So these are all possibilities of the joint variant of the joint uh, distribution. But there is one with real exception, for example, huh? this is the assumption that it depends. Okay? Very important. Then what is the standard Gaussian? It means that if f from uh, C to R is a test function, so by test function, I mean continuous. Bounded continuous, for instance. Then uh, the standard Gaussian is you take the uh, my g n omega and you integrate some test function of g n omega with respect to the underlying mobility space here where omega leaves. Well, <laughs> this is simply equal now integral in the, this space c of f of x y. So exponential minus the x dy. So I make everything here to make this measure probability measure, right? And uh, so this is the definition of standard Gaussian. It means that uh, if you take f uh, as function, integral of f is simply the integral of function against this. This is the law of, of the measure. It's a complex. So it means that. The law of this variable should be a measure on the complex numbers. And of course, if I take a characteristic function, because at the end of the day, allowed, I just to tell that the probability that gn is in some set is the integral of c of this set with respect to this Gaussian. This is the standard Gaussian. And now uh, we, so now I can a little bit explain why this is a measure, because there is a natural. Omega leaves on a natural of on an underlying probability space. So I have a map which omega is a function. So they disappear in the right side. Because they are all uh, uh, independent and identical distribution. So when I say standard, they are all with the same law. Mm -hmm. So for every n, for every n you have this they have the same distribution. Okay. But the important thing is they not only have the same, they have different. Mm -hmm. This is a key okay. assumption. So uh, if you if you feel puzzled, you can say for anything. And then uh, uh, let me come back to to the uh, this why I call that this map defines a measure. So usually a random variable is what so it's each omega you give some number. This will be done for analysis, right? And so this such a map introduces a measure on the numbers so in the best case on our hand. And we have some better students. <laughs> okay. So here we can go even further. Uh, our map goes to functions. They will be even distribution. So somehow it's a measure on the space of functions. And in other spaces, we can have random variables on the matrices, on on the, the uh, on surfaces, random surfaces. So you know, each time we have some random geometry. This kind of map and here we have curves. Or whatever we study this week. So, so here it's and so what does it mean? It means that the measure here is transported to some measure on the target space, which here are the functions. But of course, for the moment, I still remain formal because which space of functions there is not only one, there are many there, HS, LG, whatever. And so now I will see in which space leave this guy, and then some by some. Relatively soft considerations, we can really see that this is a measurable map from omega to the space where this guy lives. 
And so as a measure of log map, uh, uh, then the, the, the measure on the property space is transported to some measure on the function space. And this is the measure. I say that this, this measure on the functions is absolutely continuous with respect to this one. Not the same, it's absolutely continuous. Is that they make zero measure here, this zero measure here. So one has some density with respect to that. And so, but here, the measure of this very side. Sorry? How do you have to understand it? Ah, because H has this contribution. Yeah, it's good. Uh, I don't have time to explain this in the data, so I'm sorry. Uh, but the point is that H has two contributions, this one and this one. So if I forget this one, the potential energy to be exactly this uh, measure. So if I take here H1 square, I will obtain that the measure I obtain is absolutely continuous with respect to this one. Why? Because if you write the H1 log in spectro, you need it to be something like, okay, since you have the question, you in H1 will be something square, it will be something one plus lambda n square times, uh, okay, I will say u n square, where u n is the Scalar product with u and phi n like this. And so, somehow, if you look at this measure, if you identify the function u with its Fourier coefficient in this basis phi n, then on each Fourier coefficient, when you make exponential minus this, you have a Gaussian, but such that the variance is uh, moving. And so, what I did here, I put all gn, even in the limit of like with the same variance. And I, in the denominator, I renormalize so that this guy to take, uh, take, uh, if it was the L2 norm, then I don't need to do anything, just it's a GM. It's what we call the white box. Yeah, in a different context, this is the measure for Euclidean quantum field theory. This is called the Gaussian field theory. Okay. So I don't want to use uh, some sort of But uh, yeah, I think your question is completely different. It's more clear now. Okay. Uh, and now, so well, even if it is where it comes, so where this site lives, and actually we have that, and I will prove it. I will show you. This is the, uh, of course, I will not do it as good as Professor Zawa, but I will give you a proof. Uh, so this site lives in HS, so S smaller than the almost surely, and also this site does not belong to L2 in M, uh, almost sure. So essentially this guy is an object which is almost surely negative so over spaces, but unfortunately it misses L2. And then he actually is uh, not an L1 log function. It's also working. So it's really a distribution. And now if I look like this, the map from omega to psi omega x, now I can see there's a map from omega to this HS, you fix one. It will be always the same measure. It's a bit common. <laughs> uh, some can be united. And then, uh, so now I have a well defined map with well identified target space, and which is measurable. And now ask is measurable. Why it is measurable? Because it's actually L2 in omega with respect. Actually, it's even L2. And then, uh, then yes. This world starts to make sense. The measure I say about is the image measure by this. Okay. So, what is the omega? Is it the uh, sub of C? It's an omega. There, there is some underlying probability space omega F P on which the, the Gaussian are defined. Okay. I maybe I have to say so. Okay. And there is one small remark I write it here that in fact, uh, if you have local well positiveness on the support, the support of Gibbs measure, then you have global well positiveness on the support. So uh, that's why, if essentially, uh, what happens is that in order to show the invariance of this measure under the power of this equation, I should solve it with such data. And this data lives in HS with S negative. So 
where the motivation to study where bosons in HS is small than one, because I even should, sorry, they just is more than zero, zero minus epsilon. And also what is nice is that I know that if I am good enough to find a way to solve locally the problem with this kind of initial data, then uh, there is an argument which uses the invariant measure as a kind of conservation law to get from local to global solution very much in the way we use it with the residual wet digit with regular solution. So that's an, so somehow all this was why I care about HS and smaller than one. So of course, I should mention that in this field everything started by the work of Borg. Is there any works that gives measure construction for generic uh, This is done. This is well known. Completely well known. It's written in the paper by me, Nicola Bure, and. Uh, and Laurent Thomas. And so, uh, wherever he wrote or some pedestrian book by like E.D. Pentox and things like this, and we had several libraries from quantum field theory for the same completely standard. They were not really about the deep classifications reference, but I think it's standard for them. I can explain why. Okay. I, uh, they are, for many of them, it's standard, but it's a very strange field. Many standard things are not really written. I mean, in PE, you have a better term than some other. We revealed that this. Some people may say that we do spaghetti on the market, yeah. but at least there is the advantage that there are many sources. <laughs> so, but hopefully, some of them. In this point of view, the only they really care about great things and somehow for the So, okay, if you want the reference where well, this is done, it's a paper in Anal of Toulouse by myself, Nicolas Burk, and Johan Thomas, where things are really, really gray and we don't understand. I think we understand, okay. And then, of course, if you ask people, they can uh, so every, every culture is good. Time. Anyway, so it's done. Sorry, well, okay. sorry. So it, it, is this was specific to dimension two? Or? What is specific to dimension? But this guy is very specific to dimension two. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, sure. It's uh, uh, the construction of this measure can also be done in dimension three. Uh, it's more complicated than dimension four. Uh, it's not possible. This uh, actually you can sort of take all three down, for example. Yeah, so dimension three, the short answer is in dimension three, you can do it, and dimension four, you can do it. Because it's H1 criticality. It's really related to H1 criticality, it's the fact that you cannot find the dimension. The famous H1 getting better, I think. It's also the limiting part of the construction. It's a little better, but somehow the H1 critical problem is in the Bad side. We cannot we cannot solve critical problems in this thing. Anyway. Uh, but maybe we can probably one yeah. stupid observation that uh, also this delta with counter interaction are meaningful to the three or in higher trigger. Stupid to observate, not <clears throat> so what about the, the sign in front of the linearity? So, and yeah, yeah, it's important. To, uh, well, if you change the sign, then uh, there is a trouble in the definition, and indeed, it could be it's not possible to find it. even with L2 kappa. It, 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 in 2D, uh, uh, it, the focusing case is not good. In 1D, it's okay. And what is doable if you put here to the power of 3? But power of 4, uh, it's again, you have a uh, non. No, no possibility to define. Uh, of course, we enter in the field which is not the subject of mine. Okay, I do PD. And all the things we discuss here are uh, more subject, as you say, quantum And I don't want to enter in this. Uh, well, so what I can see. <coughs> and let me now, uh, what I would like to prove in the task is the following plan. That in fact, uh, this thing I will prove it now. <laughs> And I will even prove it in more general setting. Uh, when I start, in fact, in, uh, uh, in other words, how long, how much time I have? One half. Okay. Okay. To get yes, but what, how much it is that? Uh, 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 then, uh, then let me show the following link lemma. Let lemma. Uh, I would like to show the proof of this step. And if I do this, I'm satisfied by my book. <laughs> uh, lemma. Let 
So I don't take exactly the Gibbs measure initial data, but I change it a little bit. Let us define this function, psi alpha x omega, which is actually the same like here. No, no difference. The only difference is that I changed the decay of the Fourier equation. So instead of one half, I take alpha over two. Of over two by x. And so what I claim is then that there are two things. The first thing is that psi alpha belongs to HS in M as smaller than alpha minus one, almost surely. So this is what I would like to prove to you. And the second thing is that psi alpha does not belong to L2, well, H, sorry, H alpha minus one, and almost sure. Uh, well, so this is uh, in some parallel. So in the previous, in the Gibbs measure, I take alpha one, and so we recover what I said. If, uh, it is in HS as negative almost surely, and it is not in L2, but uh, this one, but it's actually true if you allow Coefficient which we were slightly stronger we can, then uh, functions with this kind of functions slightly improved. And uh, as you will see, uh, the theorem I, I say will be local over positive with this kind of coefficient yeah, for alpha b and one. And then alpha yeah. equal yeah. one will be the final goal, which yes. many I think. Sorry? Uh, I thought here yeah. is uh, a real number. I mean, it would be very negative, but it's not a question of what any number. The interesting number is one. And if, if you take, for instance, alpha, it's a good point. If you take alpha equal to two, well, two plus epsilon, then I can use the resistance galway to use that. Right? Because it will be almost surely that one, and then I'm sure. But as far as alpha is smaller than two, something not trivial should be done to the locality. Okay, so this is, let us try to give the proof of this lemma. And this is from just here or in this dimension? No, here is any manifold. Okay, any manifold. And then it's a good point. I know uh, it's not really also open in this one. Uh, I don't know a reference, but as for us, we did it, and we'll show you why it's clear for us. Uh, we didn't have occasion to write it. And it's true that in the paper, I'm not sure we write about it because it's Immediately from the sphere, but okay, now I show you something is not in the So, how we prove it? Well, we exploit the random oscillations via the following computation. So, I take the HS norm of this guy. So, the HS norm is 1 minus Laplace to the power of S over 2 applied to this uh, guy square with respect to the probability measure. So really, x is fixed on the manifold, and I exploit exploit this orthogonality with respect to g n. So I use really very very few independence. I use the only that they are orthogonal to on the manifold. And so this can be written. So I show you a formula, and you show me whether you agree. So essentially, what is nice is they say your function. When I apply one, one minus the function of about s over two, it appears this guy to the power s. Okay? Because one minus the function on phi n is one plus lambda square phi n. And to the power of s is to the power of s. Okay? It's really it's because of the, the square. So the square, I without square already. And then of course there will be the square. One minus the plus over two will go to this series. It only hits here. And it produces this factor but with the power s. So I propose you a formula, which is that this guy is some phi nx squared divided by lambda n to the power of what is two times alpha or not alpha. Yeah, two times alpha minus two times s. Where I use the Japanese bracket notation, which is that x is one plus x squared to the power one, 
this Japanese bracket to the power of alpha. When you put the square, it becomes two times alpha. And this two times S is the effect of this Laplace. So when I write this, I forget for a bit observation. So uh, why I can write this? Because, well, these GN are independent. So when you make the square, only the diagonal contribution comes. And they, they were normalized to have variance one and so uh, integral gen square is one and integral gen gen one is zero. So really, usually we make the orthogonality in X variable, but how we use it in the omega. And then, uh, then once I write this, now Herman there will help with his nice work. So the, he wrote many important papers, of course, but what I like very much is the spectral function in second order realistic for guidance, where he put something like this. Where he proved so, let me remember what Herman had proved, and now we will use it. Herman had proved something like this that if you take the sum lambda n smaller than lambda, phi n x squared, so this is equal to some constant lambda to the dimension. So it's independent of the dimension, but the manifold should be without open. And here is some remainder term, which in L infinity on M is lambda to the power of P minus one, something like this. And this small one, right? But anyway, for me, it's for me quite too, okay. And so if you prove this, uh, you immediately get the fail flow. You just integrate this next. And so we all these are on one. And so here you get a number of angle values smaller than lambda. And here is C lambda to the power of here. C is the volume, the independent of X. C is independent of X. So this is what you wonder. Well, uh, if you want to hear my analysis for the proof of this, I personally uh, learned this uh, in the Soge book, uh, the book. Uh, Fourier analysis, uh, does Fourier analysis. And I was really surprised that when I started to my paper, then I understood. <laughs> but maybe because I just started to get it. And it's a nice application of the parameters for the wave equation. Yeah, yeah it's a very, it's a good uh, result. And now I will use this result in the complex. Uh, and what I will say is that now I will do something a little bit in the spirit. Because excuse me, right? it's only one, it's only one two. Ah, it, uh, well, there are all proofs of the very low, which are the integrated version, which was heat equation. Then with X, I think there should be proofs by the heat equation, but I'm not aware. Okay. So here the interesting thing is that I use it for every X, you know, it's something if the very low is really integrated. It was known since then. And uh, I think, I don't know who is the first who did it actually from each x you have this. Okay, certainly especially should say I learned it from you my paper from other people because I'm somehow from this school, but I will not be surprised that something like heat equation methods so we give this, but I'm not aware of that. Maybe somebody here knows. But for me this is the place I learned. And I'm sure uh, actually Herman that sends themselves sales key paper because of this small one instead of big one. But I took it should also be sold because it's true for any X. I, I didn't know. Sorry? No, it's independent of X. Yeah, then it's the uh, Yeah, it's related to the volume. It's the geode is the volume of the of the sorry? No, when you integrate, it's only the constant integrate times the volume. Yeah, okay, that, that, that's the point. So it's some constant, which is, okay, it's the, okay, the constant is the volume of the core sphere, some sphere, okay, something, it, it, it took PFI, okay, it's something like this, and then the volume appears when you integrate. Okay, actually, it's very well explained in the, in the Soge book. So if you take the Laplace version of the operator, Constant does not depend on x. But if you take a general, this is the setting of Morgan, of Morgan, of Common. So my 
my mask is broken. So if you if you take uh, general elliptic curve operator, then it depends on x. So here it's really a nice constellation because there is a volume element which comes from the melting, which is nicely uh, nicely uh, combined with the Laplace Bertrand operator, so that at the end the constant is independent. But if you have a general elliptic, which is not necessarily a plus one, you still have this that here is C of X, and your mind derives you exactly how it depends on this. And the Soviet copy this. Anyway, for us, it's really not important. The important thing is that it's bounded or something like this. If it's independent, so it's bounded. Anyway, and so how I use this? Well, I come back to my sum, and I write it as sum over the attic. And so very close to what Professor Ozawa did. And so I put uh, then sum over lambda n of order this n. And so if I organize this sum according to the values of lambda n, here it will appear something like <laughs> n to the power two s minus two alpha. And then uh, here it remains uh, okay. I should try to draw it uh, phi n x squared. And now I'm in business because I can use the geometric estimation. I just forget that it's not order n. I can take all from one to infinity, uh, all the one. Uh, and also, this is bounded by some n the other n to the power two s minus two alpha n square. So this is from the problem here. So this is bounded uh, if 2s minus 2 alpha plus 2 is negative, which should be the same thing I explained. It's less more than R minus 2. So this is the proof. And, uh, uh, and what uh, I have to say is that, yeah, so I think that that's the thing I want to explain during my talk in the charts. And uh, as you see, it's a kind of combination of Kerman there and slight probabilistic star. And that's it. And to come back to the question of, so this is the proof I like because it really makes a few to the discount the below, but it's too much technology for nothing. There is a proof people in Bounce with very can doing only appealing to, to singularity of green function, right? And uh, it will use its less technology. But since we have the technology, I think it's more, uh, more uh, happy to uh, get away from the similar talk. And I think that indeed people from computer they don't use Kalmanda, but they also don't need it because they are more elliptic equation way. So I sh should be clear that I use too much strength here. The wave equation parametrics to prove something like this, it could be done with less technology. Okay, and now. I, I come back to my uh, question of local wave positiveness for S more than one. So this is a good data point. I will show local wave positiveness in this data. But let us now come to what is true. Now it remains how many minutes? Because I should cut from my lecture. 15. 15, good. So I will cut many things, but I think I will, I will be able I will be able to announce the new result. So now I come back to old results. So the first result is theorem one, which is due to Borgen. So in this field, Borgen is a little bit like Jokshi in tabulous of variation. So he gave us so much heritage that I think many generations will exploit it. It's our colleagues in tabulous of variation. So in our field, Borgen somehow left us a lot of ideas. And I think many generations will benefit of that, exactly like many generations benefited from the judge. So let M be the two dimensional clocks uh, with the flat matrix. So what I call is R to Z squared. So this is the setting for again like very much. And of course, I should set. With flat metric. Then we again both then the problem I wrote here in the blackboard 
is locally well posed. <laughs> In HS on the toes, and from the positive S. So, as you see, by purely deterministic, by no probability, it almost reaches the strip of the Gibbs measure. So, I prepared in my lecture what is the key and guardian to prove this, but I don't have time. Then, uh, as I said, with Burk and Gerard. Actually, uh, so this is Gerard and myself. So we discussed here yesterday with Nicola. That's what Siri defended. Hmm. So, by the way, Siri, Siri is in the hall, right? He's uh, something, yeah, something like that. a bit interesting. So, uh, with Björk and Gerard, we proved that uh, if M is general, if M is general, so arbitrary, uh, NLS is locally well posed in HS. And now, as you see, we have one half derivative from both ends. So for a general surface, we should be in HS is greater than one half, which is better than one, which would be by energy metal, but still far away from what we can did. And then uh, uh, this is that somehow the important results for what I will do today is that if we, if we take M to be the two dimensional sphere, so here I also prepare to explain what's the key area, but I don't have time. And then we also prove that if we take M to be the two dimensional sphere with the standard metric, which means a metric which comes from the embedding phase two of R3 in R3, then uh, where LLS is locally robust. And as you see now, it will be different in HS. And now S is bigger than one quarter. So we gain one quarter derivative. And for the result I explained today, it is completely fundamental. And LS is always the cubic one that you sorry. I don't change the equation. And so this is, uh, and moreover, so theorem Z asterisks are an outcome of the proof or an intrinsic factors, one quarter, one half? Well, uh, good question. So here, I think any moment with a half will be welcome, and other many more. We don't believe it's optimal. One quarter is optimal in a sense. So that uh, moreover, so and moreover, for S smaller than one quarter, uh, semilinear well poses the spheres. What does it mean? It means that well poses the spheres. It means that we cannot solve the problem by semilinear methods, which means by bigger iteration. In other words, the flow map is not uniformly continuous. As, uh, for instance, I learned this type of uh, things in a paper by Luis and the Kenning and the Pons. So, in, in, with easy words, below one quarter, if somebody knows how to solve this problem, it should be as a quasi linear problem, as Euler equation. Shouldn't be solved anyway anymore as a semi-linear problem, even if, as you remember, the equation seems very semi linear. Right? So, we, what we somehow found in these things is that, okay, there is no derivative in the nominal. <laughs> so some people call it positive in a form that when there is a derivative. <laughs> so here, if, if there is no derivative, if S is below one quarter, the problem should be treated if there was a derivative in the nominality. But unfortunately, we don't know how. Uh, at least me, I spent, uh, with Björk and Gerard, by the way, we spent a, uh, a considerable amount of time to solve it as a cousin a problem, in particular, inspired by what we did for them to be on all other equations, and we never succeeded. And I know other people who failed doing this. So it's really interesting to see whether we can solve it deterministically below, below one quarter by quasi linear method. It should be solved by a quasi linear method. It should not be solved by, by German and popular integral iteration. But it's not clear. So the, the present technology, in particular, 
short time for restriction spaces by Adaho, Kenning, and UNESCO don't seem to be quite efficient for this problem, according to all these authors. <laughs> so it's not clear. And so, uh, well, and this is in sharp contact with Borgen, where in this uh, regularity, the problem can be solved as a city, you know. <laughs> so it was somehow something we did in the beginning of 2000. And uh, I have a problem for Chris Vega, uh, because I know that maybe he doesn't like much uh, <laughs> This problem, but I'm sure actually what's going on below one code because I have got to think about this problem by deterministic patterns. And one day I believe it's well posed, one day I believe it's ill posed. Mm -hmm. And I think that a bet, you have exactly the same issue with the following problem. Take the two dimensional wave equation. But now we take it on R, on R2. So no manifold, okay, in 2D. So what is the best local well post for this reason? Well, well, local, uh, it's well post in HS, okay, in, in the weight equation, you should take HS, HS minus one, as bigger than the same one point. Well, you can make the computation. The problem, the scaling regularity is the same, zero, like for the NLS, but you cannot have the scaling regularity because of knapp boundaries. And so the best way of causing this result for this is this equation is bigger than one point. And what's going on for us more than one? Can you prove a kind of well or uh yeah. you post it? It's very close to works by Lindblad, right? Where he takes the real numerical like this. I didn't see how to apply this method to this problem, but I think. If somebody shows me how to put your is here for a small than one quarter, it's quite like you can transform it to this problem. Somehow this problem, what I learned during the years, is that this problem is harder than this problem that I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, so for me, uh, it's a good problem. Take the cubic wave equation in 1D with HS initial data. Of course, make the computation that Stricker technology doesn't go to the scaling regularity. Because of the club construction. And then, uh, okay, open question. Let's go on one photo. No, I say to Luis because I know Luis especially is a club example of this like this. And well, I really expertise this problem. And if somebody makes progress on this, there will be hope. And this will indicate what happens on my the rest of the scale. There will not be semi linear results. Nobody, uh, here, even the result that it's not semi linear is not known. So it is easier. One, two, probably. No, because we worked hard to prove that it's not similar. Okay. I don't think people, I don't think, I don't think, I actually, but everything is open. I don't know. But I think people didn't concentrate on this problem. They concentrated on this one because of the collection to Einstein equation or whatever, you know. But I think this is equal interest. <laughs> and in the same thing, Limbler Cartagena is based again on this. Uh, Clap of suction. That's why we don't get go to the scale in reality. So I think for the wave equation, we have a model. So I think wave cache would easy. Anyway, well, uh, we are in public. There is a question that I would like to ask. And if somebody makes a progress of this, I think there will be implications. Well, so far, I have oh, <laughs> five minutes, right? Good. So I will be able to, I will be able to announce the list. But before I announce the result, is to say, so F, uh, theorem one is epsilon close to the Gibbs measure. Right? Gibbs measure is negative here is positive. Epsilon regularity close. And in fact, for game to see it by using a proper uh, formalistic argument, to gain this epsilon in the famous paper of White. On the other hand, uh, it, of course, it's not only this there, you should exploit the randomness to go. To gain an epsilon. It's not to the deterministic, but you should explain very tiny something, only for epsilon or epsilon. In the case of the sphere, at least with the best result, we are one quarter derivatives away from the Gibbs measure. And uh, actually, it looked completely out of reach during 10 years, but as you see, for five years ago, we started to get ideas how to approach it. I will not be able to say very prepared the idea, but I will at least state the result, and then I say the idea. Orally, 
with words. So, okay, what is the result we get? So this is the theorem of Birk. Oops, Assuming myself, 2024, which says that, uh, well, ah, I erased the data. Uh, let M the sphere with the standard metric. Then uh, now and uh, and now alpha is <laughs> and alpha B element almost the Gibbs measure, right? Then uh, <clears throat> our problem NLS is locally or post. In uh, with data, with data, C alpha x omega uh, is uh, almost surely, surely, almost surely. So it's really random data. For almost every omega, this initial data gives me a local solution. I can quantify the time existence. Many things can be quantified, but the last step of the study. For almost every omega, this initial data, which is a regularity uh, L2, right? but not H minus eh? we can depend on it. So, this is a result which is on archive and which is written in all the tasks. And so, alpha equal to one is something, okay, if I was American, I would say we did it, but uh, I, I would not say it today, but maybe next time I will say it. Uh, I think we have uh, proof also for alpha equal to one, which is much more difficult than what I said here. And but still with the same ideas. And now orally, I know I want to take it. So uh, I prepare how what is the difference? Oops. So why this problem is difficult, and what is the difference with respect to what Morgan did on T2? It took 94, now we are 2024, so 30 years right? <laughs> to pass from cross to the sphere. And even we don't give alpha is bigger than So the main reason is that, well, I don't have that. But when you write the first bigger iteration with this kind of initial data, what Borgen observed is that there is one half smooth. And this one half smooth is crucial because somehow he needs only a sign thing. And then, of course, uh, it works. What we observe on the sphere, we have one paper, which is also an argument, which says that there is no. The first initial data is as regular as the the first figure iteration is as regular as the data. So no problem. Yes. But there is a second paper which says that okay, there is no scooting in general because of concentration of the data geometric reason. But if you remove some contribution of nonlinearity, then you have one half. And then of course you remove the big part of nonlinearity. How we do it? With this part, well, here we benefited the work by using that model in the UN. You can, we have technology since now more than five years to treat these terms, which means that we just keep them in the answers. In a sense that, okay, Borgen answers first, the solution is initial uh, free evolution plus more regular. More recently, thanks to many works, not only this one, but many works since 2015, we started to get results. We are more involved. Resolution hazards can be justified. So here we benefit from this thing. So we first should identify which part of the nonlinearity if one has something, which was actually that's why we were working from two different parts. Or uh, me and Chen we identified the data, so it was interesting. And then one identify what remains we put in the hazards. So here in the sphere, there's an interesting geometry because you really the thing which remains in the hazards has a Geometric property, it's a unitary operation. And so, what we use is that on the sphere, the Hegel function of, a, of spherical harmonics is a huge dimension. So, we really use invariance by rotation in this space. Now, even in the local analysis, you use global propagation of measured arguments. Please start to understand what it means. So, it, it's really global argument, even in the local analysis, which of course is only on the sphere, because on the top of every thing is dimension one. So, here, in a sense, the sphere is more complicated, but on the other case, it's easier because of this uh, big, uh, on the T Jagan space, we use invariance by rotation, we simplify many things, and somehow our approach is completely physical space, physical space approach. 
somehow our function of the sphere, you you have you can develop any function of the sphere in Fourier series, but this projection is not on one dimensional space, right? It's on two times n plus one dimensional space. And so in this space, you take L infinity index. So in physical space, no index. The only Fourier analysis in this n. And we are able to do, to do physical space on each physical spherical harmonic space because of this invariance rotation. So this is a huge difference compared to those. And then uh, once you say this, you should find many things. <laughs> but essentially, this explains alpha bigger than one because for alpha bigger than one, essentially, you can put many things in L infinity. <laughs> and when alpha is one, they barely misses L infinity and then becomes a mess. So, but still, things which look not bounded are bounded by the knapp tree, uh, not sorry, Kotler uh, Stein tree. I don't know what. You need to iterate this stuff to big power. And something which was already involved becomes bounded. So this is the basic idea. And so R equal to one is really another story. But I believe we have all ingredients to solve also the Gibbs measure problem, which will be somehow a satisfaction because I studied this problem since more than 20 years. I'll be happy. And uh, of course, other many folks complete problem, right? If you take uh, the hyperbolic method, I always puzzle my colleagues to do hyperbolic methods. <laughs> Thank you, Nikolai, for really very interesting talk. I think we all enjoyed the, the talk. And uh, of course, we uh, have questions. Oh, uh, who is the first? Oh, Eva. Well, so this one quarter obstruction is related to the fact that uh, the geodesic flow on the sphere is what we call stable. You have geodesic which uh, which are stable. The sense that if you perturb a little bit, they remain uh, close, and so it concentrates what they produce what they call fuzzy moves. It means high energy waves which are concentrated on a curve. Now, so in a sense, if you take the sphere spectral theory, you have the knob, somehow, which is of course never written by people in microlocal analysis knob. But for me, it's the microlocal version of knob. That's why I prefer this one, because knob is explicit, you know. You know what's up. And so, yeah, there is a possibility to concentrate on a curve. Actually, this is not right. It's concentrated in x1.0. It's space time. So, here the curve, the difference with the wave is that here the curve is space time, t and one of the x variable. Here the curve is entirely in the x variable, but still the same phenomenon. So, yeah, this is the important thing we understood that the concentration on curves shifts the scale integral. Then other geometric things, no. <laughs> for instance, hyperbolic geometry is very, should be much nicer for this problem. But unfortunately, people doing uh, uh, analysis of negative picture of manifolds don't have technology, at least as far as I see, to tackle this kind of problem because their analysis is too much linear. You know, all these quantum limits and things like this. Of course, they do very interesting, but I don't think they do something which tells me interesting things about the product of the <laughs> functions. I mean, they are really at linear right level. On the nonlinear level, I think they're very Certainly, I'm not the good one to ask the question. I try to advertise the problem with uh, colleagues doing uh, analysis of negative of manifolds. They get immediately interested, but then also immediately find that it's a tough problem. So, well, uh, uh, I think uh, it's really interesting to understand whether we can do things on the negative picture of manifold. And uh, maybe one day we can have somebody who's very intelligent and have ideas, but I think it requires new ideas. Not the one used in a quantum house, I'm, I'm sure in that's something more should be done. Okay, so just a comment. Uh, so, as far as I understand, this notion of which measure is intrinsically uh, 
let's say, subcritical when plugged in, in, in the, the address stuff because it, you are not encoding the, the, the linearity. So, my question is at least in some scaling invariant case, let's say, critical case in, in the cubic in, in dimension four, uh, is there any hope uh, to claim the existence of a non linear Gibbs measure, which will be the field? Uh, it is non linear, right? Like, because you have the perturbation. But I mean, non linear in the sense of a non linearity. The yes, yes, yes. But uh, I think that I think that uh, it's a very good question, but nobody knows how to. Uh, yeah, so uh, of course. The sorry? I mean, the speed. So given the sphere of the torus, uh, actually I claim I claimed in a bit a little bit speculative way that in the four-dimensional case there is no chance to to define the Gibbs measure, but uh, it's famous result by the Gibbs measure to be in Cuba and so on. So it's very fast to make it. But if you look at the paper, they they say what to say. So the but to, there is interaction. And there is a main part. So somehow you postulate that the interaction should be a perturbation. And I agree with you that there is, it's not excluded that somebody very intelligent use the non-inarity as a main part of the construction somehow. And then it will not be Gaussian at all, or really even not shift of the Gaussian. Because okay, people in one of the theory are very happy to say, okay, in 2D, we are absolutely continuous with respect to Gaussian. In 3D, we become singular. Come on, you become singular just because of some small shift. With unique in dimensions, indeed, makes the measure of the singular for some very big reason. So I think that uh, it's not excluded that you make a construction where you take the whole nonlinearity and then you define a regular scale measure, which will be completely different. I think people in physics don't like because for some reason the nonlinear is the interaction, and the main part is the so they want to do. But for mathematical, from a mathematical point, I don't think it's excluded that, you know, to be honest, I'm thinking of such a problem. Hopefully, one day I have a real result. But from my viewpoint, it is not excluded that the nonlinearity defines a limit, which will not be Gaussian, which will be such. Which is more, you know, more like this. So, in very rough way, the, the Gibbs measure is absolutely continuous with respect to this one. So, I mean, one dimension. And then, here is constant. What I say is that if you take the money, it's not excluded that you define a measure which very rapidly is like this. I, I, I strongly believe people that there are situations we can. Something you should see when you say that you plug it in the access. Oh, no, no, now it, it's not related to the data, it's really measure construction. Okay, so it's, a, it's measure construction. And then solving, solving the equation on the super measure is another story. And so here, people from front of the are much less competent. So that's why we are not safe. And uh, there, then become key problem. <laughs> then, uh, so there are two types. One is to define the measure. And, and I think in the definition of the measure, it's not excluded that you define the measure from the non like this. I'm sure physicists will tell you it's completely mathematical stuff. Okay, but I will be first. Okay, I think you can continue the discussions uh, after. Thank you very much for the nice talk.